Now, there's just 24 hours or so to go until nominations close for the Labour leadership. It looks like a three-horse race between Andy Burnham, Yvette Cooper and Liz Kendall. But as far as readers of a popular Labour magazine are concerned, an outsider has a clear lead. A poll for Labour list this week had the left-winger Jeremy Corbyn leagues ahead of his rivals on 47%. But will he manage to secure the all-important 35 MPs nominations he needs to make it onto the ballot paper? Well, Jeremy Corbyn joins me now. A very good morning to you. And this is an issue, isn't it? Because obviously to get on the ballot paper, you need those 35 MPs and you've turned down an offer of help so-called from uh, Andy Burnham lend uh, you some of his supporters well I think there was also a misunderstanding of the rules um, Labour MPs are the gatekeepers to the leadership contest it requires 15% of all MPs to nominate a candidate that means 35 and once an MP has nominated somebody unless that candidate themselves withdraw they cannot change their nomination and so I think it may well have been a misunderstanding of the rules the idea that uh, an MP could go into the parliamentary Labour Party office and say well sorry I know I nominated X an hour ago, I now want to back Y. It Can't would be happen. a bit chaotic, wouldn't it? Are you going to make the 35 then? I don't know. Um, we we're up to 18 as of Friday, and um, I've had some very nice phone calls last night and this morning, and uh, during the day yesterday, and we've got um, four more names. Uh, who've already no agreed to nominate tomorrow morning. So that puts us up to 22. And the argument you're going to make, it said you're going to argue from the left, um, you felt, for instance, that um, you know, your, your recent manifesto in the election wasn't particularly left-wing. What are the core arguments you would make? I think there was a confusion in the election. Ed Miliband made some great points about zero hours contract, about um, living wage, about rights at work, great stuff. He also made great stuff about um, nursery education, all those issues, good. The problem was that the fundamental economic message was that we were going to pay off the debt and balance the books in one parliament. By doing that, and therefore there's going to be huge cuts somewhere, and if you protect education and health budgets, which I would obviously want to do, then you're going to hit local government very hard and that's going to lead to a lot more job I mean, losses. But did your blood run cold then? You must have listened to Chukramana, who was, was uh, for a brief time a candidate himself, now supporting Liz Kendall, who says that um, deficit reduction is actually a progressive policy. Well, I find it's an odd definition of the word progressive, actually. Deficit reduction means what? That we cut public expenditure. And by and large... Well, it means public you don't saddle future generations with that. Well, but you also maintain the life chances and opportunities of the current generation. So those living in housing stress, those that are homeless, those that are sleeping on the streets, those kids that are not able to get work, all those things, they're a generation that's going to be damaged by this. Take it over a longer period. Take it over a longer time. Rebalance the economy. And above all, invest in the economy and invest in people. So what does the party look like if you either don't make it onto the ballot paper or you don't make it uh, beyond that, you don't become leader when you've got the Liz Kendall's, the Duke of uh, and others arguing things like that and you've got this huge support from a from a grassroots publication. Is there any is there danger of split or at least continuing tensions within the party? Well, the Labour Party has always been a pretty broad church and it's always been a bit of a coalition of itself. What I'm trying to do is say there is a Labour tradition here, a Labour tradition of public enterprise, of public ownership, a Labour tradition of investment in social health services, which I think is a very strong one. And what brings a lot of people into the party and brings a lot of people to vote for us in the first place. And so I want to raise those issues. I also want to raise the issue of nuclear weapons, of trident, human rights and, and justice. Just to say to everyone in the party, there are a lot of people out there who actually want the Labour Party to represent what they, in their gut feelings, are all about. Now, I'm not looking for this for some personal aggrandizement. I'm much too old for that kind of thing. I'm doing this because I want there to be a serious debate in the party in which those points of view are heard, are put and are debated, and I'll be organising, irrespective of what happens on Monday, tomorrow, a, um, an economic uh, seminar, conference, in which we will hear those radical views and also look at the consequences for other socialist parties that have got involved in uh, debt payment systems, such as in Greece, and what happened to them when they ended up imposing austerity on their people. OK, Jeremy Corbyn, great talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. And you're watching Manahan on Sky News.